water from the building comes out uh, into this manhole and goes into a pipe that goes out to a lift station that pumps the sewage out to the ponds. And so for this project, what we did is uh, divert the sewage from this building, from this uh, northbound pumper station. All the drainage from the toilets, urinals, sinks, uh, comes out here and gets diverted into our lift station, which is uh, located over here, which has uh, grinder pumps. And the grinder pumps uh, pump the water underground over to our pilot treatment site in the back. After treatment at the pilot site, the water is returned back to the original lift station and gets pumped out to the ponds. So what uh, we have is two separate water systems. And a lot of the rest areas, the conversations are already plumbed this way. So we have a water system for uh, flushing toilets and urinals, and a separate water system that's chlorinated for uh, hand washing and drinking fountains. So this site already has a, a separated plumbing system. So this is the type of plumbing we need for going to recycled water that we want to put water uh, that's not potable, basically either untreated groundwater or uh, recycled water <clears throat> into the non-potable system, use that for toilet and urinal flushing, and use the chlorinated well water for hand washing and drinking purposes. So this is the return from our no, so this is the so this large pipe is for toilet flushing uh -huh. and urinal flushing only. It's untreated groundwater, okay. and this we could also put the recycled water into this pipe. Oh, okay. This uh, upper pipe is for uh, hand washing and drinking fountains, so potable. So basically, as a, a dual, we call this a dual plumbing system. This is so the one line for condition. not potable and one for yeah. And a lot of conversations are already this way, so already plumbed for recycled water effectively. Okay. So that's a real uh, benefit and. We should take this into consideration when we're doing uh, future designs, as this dual plumbing makes uh, recycled water possibility. So it's uh, important. So here, what we have is uh, wastewater coming from the building, going into our lift station that diverts it out. After it gets treated, it gets pumped over into the, the uh, original existing lift station. And so this is where our diversion occurs at. So what we did is cut the pipe that goes over to that lift station and uh, what teeth is the, into it. And the green pipe is the drainage pipe? That is the drain that goes out to the original lift station. Okay. Yep. So this is uh, raw sewage from the building. So it comes in. You can see uh, what we have is a lot of trash that people throw down the, down the drains. So there's a lot of rubber gloves and uh, diapers and all kinds of plastic uh, trash. So that's really problematic. And this is one of the challenges with wastewater from conversations, is that it's basically people use it like uh, as a waste disposal system. They throw whatever they want in there. And so we have to have really good pumps good grinder pumps to be able to manage that material. The pumping system is your, our system right now. This is, yeah, so this, this whole lift station, this tank with the pumps and everything in here okay. is part of the pilot treatment system okay. because it's taking all the diverted sewage and putting it back to the wastewater system in the back, to our pilot system. So when we did the uh, installation, the pipe that takes the water, the sewage, pumped from the lift station back to our pilot site was uh, installed with an underground directional drilling uh, rig. So basically what happened is they drilled a horizontal bore well uh, from that lift station location under the concrete block wall that's over here and, uh, and cut, we caught it on the other side and then pulled the polyethylene pipe, a two inch polyethylene pipe, actually four two inch polyethylene pipes back through that borehole, uh, through the underground borehole and then uh, connected it to our system at both ends. So basically it was a very unintrusive uh, way to install underground piping. We didn't have, there was no trenching, no excavation. We didn't have to damage the wall or anything. It was all able to do it underground. So did you see one or two four inches pipes? There was uh, four two inch pipes. Four two inches So pipe. <clears throat> two uh, pipes to bring sewage over, uh -huh. there's two pumps. Uh -huh. So we have a redundancy there. One pipe to bring sewage back and one pump, or one pipe for a conduit for electrical. It's all two inches. All two inch pipes. Uh, so this water's is, coming from? Yeah, so water's coming 
from the comfort station into this tank where we're settling the solids out of the water and making the water clean enough uh, for the second stage of treatment. So if you want to look in here, we can see uh, all the solids that are accumulating. The solids are breaking down with uh, bacteria that are in the water. And then we're spraying water in here to break the solids down further and help uh, mix the system up. This tank has five compartments. So this is uh, one compartment, it's about 6,000 gallons, so this is for storing all the solids. And then there's four small compartments where we uh, flow the water from the bottom to the top of the tank and contact it with anaerobic bacteria to get better treatment. So we can look in here and see where the bacteria are growing in the water and that the water is flowing uh, from the top of this tank to the bottom of this tank and flowing through the bacteria that live on the bottom of the tank. There's uh, sensors in here that measure the water temperature and also measure how much uh, solids are uh, in the tank so we know when the tank needs to be cleaned out. And the last two compartments have a media and the purpose of the media is to grow additional... That's pleasure. So the purpose of the media is to uh, grow bacteria where we can uh, contact the water with the uh, bacteria and get better treatment. So this, all this treatment happens with no aeration and no pumping. So this is all basically uh, treatment we get with, with no oxygen. <clears throat> so when, when the water comes out of this tank, you look at the vent, okay. So this is a, a, a filter that filters the gases that come out of the tank. So it filters the methane, and CO2 and any uh, odor causing gases that come out of the tank and gets filtered through this bed of activated carbon, which absorbs the uh, odor causing gases. But also we think that there's some bacteria that grow in here called methanotrophs that would uh, break the methane down into CO2. <clears throat> Effluent from the tank comes into this tank, which is a pump uh, equalization tank. So what we have is pumps in here that pump the water into our treatment system. When this tank is full, like if we get a lot of flow coming in, say for Thanksgiving, it overflows and goes into the old treatment system, the existing treatment system. And during, at night, when we have uh, no one using the facility, this allows us to keep running the treatment system at a constant flow rate until uh, it pumps this tank all the way down. Take a look at what the effluent looks like that comes out of the tank. You can see it has a lot of uh, dissolved organic matter and a lot of uh, color. It looks like a brown color. And so this is the water that's going into our treatment system. And so this is all the stuff we need to remove from the water. Come around this way. process, the treatment process basically has uh, three steps. The first one is the backwashing filter, so this takes out all the organic matter from the water practically. And then we have a second stage process, <clears throat> another type of biological filter that takes out the rest of the organic matter and converts the ammonium into nitrate. And then the uh, third stage, which is a sand filter, which takes out all the part particulate matter. So if you want to look into each of these uh, stages, the first one uses a, uh, a like a, a sand uh, pumice material. And, the, and so the water from that effluent tank is sprayed on the top. And the water that's sprayed on the top filters through that material. And the bacteria that grow on that material uh, remove the rest of the organic matter. I'm going to turn on the dosing so you can see it. So it doses every few minutes. And when the water filters through, it gets cleaned by uh, filtering through this bacteria that grow on the media. And then pump this. This is the 
a second stage of a, another biofilter. So basically this uses a geotextile and it uh, has bacteria that grow in the geotextile. And this filter basically takes the affluent from the backwashing filter and uh, does a, a, removes some additional uh, turbidity, some additional particulate matter, and also converts the ammonium into nitrate. So this is for nitrogen uh, removal. The water from this filter gets pumped into the sand filters for final, uh, final treatment before disinfection. So this acts to remove any additional floating material and take the dissolved organic matter uh, to a much lower level and makes it so that our disinfection system works really well. So we can come and look at the sand filters. So these are called uh, slow sand filters. I guess we should mention that all the processes we're looking at we've selected for being the least maintenance. So the lowest uh, maintenance and the most reliable performance. And so these sand filters basically just have a bed of sand. It's about a meter deep. And the water uh, just slowly percolates through that sand bed. And as it percolates through, it gets contacted with bacteria that live on the sand. And they pull out uh, additional dissolved organic matter and additional turbidity. We can look inside of these filters so we can see what it looks like. So you can come up and see the, the water filtering through the sand bed. the turbidity is very low and it's in compliance with state recycling uh, guidelines. So we've been getting turbidity about 0.5 and their requirements uh, too. So we're uh, far below the requirement for uh, turbidity removal. After we take out the particles, we take out all the fine material, the water gets uh, pumped uh, from this basin through the disinfection system. So disinfection here consists of uh, ozone, UV, and chlorination. So the purpose of ozone is to take the color out of the water and to make the water basically crystal clear and make it uh, easy to disinfect with uh, UV and with uh, chlorine. So ozone is generated inside of the building. It uses a two-stage process. One stage pulls oxygen out of the air. The other stage uh, converts the oxygen into ozone. And then the ozone is injected uh, into the flow here. So when the pump turns on, it uh, activates the ozone system to make ozone, and the ozone gets injected through this venturi injector. The ozonated water goes through and it gets uh, through a contact tank to give it time for the reaction to happen, and then a system to take any extra ozone that we don't need and get rid of it and uh, burn it up. And then the ozone uh, treated water gets pumped into a system with a UV lamp, and the UV lamp is inside of the building. So this is the, the ozone generator. The reference is a relatively small unit. This is enough, to, uh, more than enough, to treat all the water that we have here. Uh, this is the UV disinfection system. So this shines, uh, this has a UV bulb in it, and the UV exposed bacteria that are in the water to UV energy that uh, makes it so that they can't grow anymore. And so this is a way to basically uh, disinfect the water with no chemicals. We're look at the panel now or we're look at the chlorine? So after ozone is going yes, through. So, right. so after ozone and UV, so pretty much free of any viruses that are in the water, any bacteria or there's no issues with pathogens at this point, like all the water's been disinfected. Also, even the ozone helps break down chemicals that might be in the water, like uh, just pharmaceuticals and residual chemicals, but those also get broken down. So the water that comes out of the ozone and UV system is basically, uh, has been disinfected and all the color has been removed and it looks like, uh, like drinking water again. But when we want to take the water and put it back into the building, we want to make sure that we're not uh, growing bacteria in the pipes. So we add a small amount of chlorine to make sure that we're not going to have any bacteria growing in the plumbing system. And so uh, the water after the ozone UV system comes into this tank and gets pumped through a series of tanks where we add a small amount of chlorine. And then the tanks are here for contact tanks to give the chlorine time to react with the water before it gets pumped uh, back into the building.
So right now we're running this system as a demonstration to make sure that all the systems are reliable and working properly. And the next step in this process would be to take the final water, which is uh, located down here, and put this water uh, back into the building for toilet and urinal flushing or uh, other non-potable uses. It could also be used for uh, irrigation. And so you can see the water is uh, very clear and fully disinfected, complies with all state requirements for uh, recycled water. And then we call that uh, tertiary disinfected effluent. We're also, as a part of this, we're gonna be able to monitor the system and make sure that it's working uh, properly uh, all the time. And so we have a series of sensors that continuously collect data. And these sensors collect data over here. It takes the final effluent and it measures how much uh, oxidation has occurred in the water with this sensor called ORP. So this oxidation reduction potential it tells us what the oxidation state is. We'd like this number to be high. Uh, it measures the turbidity that's in the water, how much particulate matter is left, and this is 0.56, 0.57, so that's a very good uh, number. It measures how much chlorine is left in the water and the pH of the water, so those are numbers we want to know to make sure that uh, we're in compliance with the uh, regulated chlorine levels. And this system continuously monitors the effluent quality and can send this data uh, to a computer system or to a SCADA system so we could be doing uh, remote monitoring. So we could have the system running uh, anywhere in the state and be collecting data on a, a computer either at a district office or at the headquarters office and we would know uh, the state of the water that's being produced uh, continuously. So this is uh, from the septic tank. You see it has a yellow color with a lot of turbidity. This is a single pass through the backwashing filter. So the color is reduced and the turbidity is reduced. This is after the pack bed uh, textile filter. So uh, further reduction in turbidity down to close to two. After the sand filter, so the color has uh, been reduced even further and turbidity is uh, less than one. After ozonation, so the color has been removed and the turbidity is uh, totally gone. Then after uh, chlorination, so this is the final uh, water that we propose to recycle.